It's my pleasure to welcome you to Answers from Scripture. Whether you're just being introduced to the Bible for the first time or you've been studying it for a lifetime, I'm confident that you'll benefit from Brother Mark's passionate explanations for the Word of God. Hey friends, this is Answers from Scripture. I'm your host, Brother Mark. And today we have a follow-up video. It's a second in a series. I wasn't planning it to be a series, but we answered the question, if God is omnipotent, why are there some things he can't do? We talked about the Bible says that he cannot lie, or we often say, God, who can't fail? And we explained the difference that there's nothing impossible for him. In other words, there's nothing that he can't do because he lacks the power. Only things he can't do because he has too great of character. His character won't let him lie. Not that he's not strong enough to do that. There's nothing that would be impossible to him. There's nothing that he's not strong enough to do. So thus the word omnipotence, or to use a more biblical word, almighty. He has all power, all might, but he also has so much character that it keeps that power doing only that which it should do. But then we got a follow-up question on that video. And that was, well, if he is all-powerful, if the Lord is omnipotent, why doesn't he do more? And uh, some specifics were given. For example, why doesn't he just allow a Bible to spontaneously produce itself in the lap of every human being in the language that that person reads? Uh, Are you saying he can't do that? Of course he could do that. Uh, He made life, and life is far more complex than print on paper. That would be something that would be not only possible for him to do, something that would be easy for him to do. Well, then why doesn't he? Why doesn't he, for example, if he has the power to heal, why doesn't he just empty out the hospitals? Why doesn't he just resolve world hunger in some miraculous form or fashion? And I want us to tackle that a little bit. And we're going to look at two eras of Scripture when there were a multiplicity of miracles And this is my premise. So let me give you the premise first, is that miracles, by definition, have to remain exceptional. And the reason for that is that we as human beings take anything that happens normally or regularly, and we assign that to the realm of nature. And we no longer look at it as something from God. It's terrible that we do that, but we do. Uh, The word miracle means supernatural. And anything that happens too frequently or commonly or universally, then we refer to as natural. Think of how miraculous a sunset is, but we consider it nature. Something God does all the time. Think of the miraculousness, if that's a word, of the birth of a newborn baby. Yet because it happens with such frequency, we no longer ascribe that as power to God. We just give it a name under science and call it nature. It's still just as much God and God's power, but anything that God does too regularly or frequently. And so think about two eras of scripture. In the Old Testament, was there ever a people that saw more miracles than the children of Israel while they were in the wilderness? I I can't imagine in the entire Old Testament, any other people. They saw Moses put his hand into his garment and pull it out and it was leprous as snow, and then put his hand back into the garment and pull it out, and it was clean and flesh as it should be. They saw Moses throw down his rod and it became a serpent, and he picked up his rod and it became a rod again. They saw the rivers turn to blood. They saw the moraine. They saw the lice. They saw the darkness, and not only the darkness that was brought about the nation, but light in their homes, in Goshen, at a time when You couldn't see the sun, moon, or stars. There was supernatural light glowing from their houses. That's amazing. When the hail came, they saw Moses walk back home through the hail storm and not get hit. And the hail killing everything around it except for Moses and and doing destruction everywhere except for Goshen. They saw miracle after miracle. They saw the Passover when the firstborn son of everyone was taken except those who had the blood on their door mantle. They saw so many miracles. They saw the crossing of the Red Sea. Imagine that. 
They not only saw the crossing of the Red Sea, but they saw the drowning of the entire Egyptian army when the Red Sea came back together. They, they prayed and God gave them water. And they went to one place called Mara and the water was bitter. And God gave Moses instructions and the water was made sweet. They prayed and God sent manna down from heaven every single day, six days a week and double on the sixth day so they could rest on the seventh. Every single day, God fed millions of people in the wilderness, not only the manna, but the quail. They saw the water gush from the rock. Miracle after miracle after miracle, even daily miracles. And I want to read this verse in Exodus 17, 7. And he called the name of the place Massah or Maribah because the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? We just don't know, is there, is there a God? And if there is, does he care about us? And where is he? Is he among us or not? Never a people group in history that had seen so much of the miraculous power of God. But when the miraculous power of God becomes the norm, people become somehow callous to it. And now it's just this expectation. It's as if nature were providing the manna and not God. And unfortunately, that's the way we're, we're created. I think in the New Testament era, imagine the number of miracles that were being witnessed in what we might call Palestine or Israel. And so in, in, in Judea and Samaria and in Galilee and the surrounding areas, what people group saw more miracles than those alive in Jesus' time? And what was the end result after a time? They ascribed the miracles to Satan. There's something wrong with us as a people. But if miracles aren't kept the exception, we stop believing that they're from God. But I know the point of the question, the thought, why doesn't God just make a Bible for everyone? The thought is, doesn't God want everybody saved? And yes, he does. The Bible says he does. Well, then wouldn't God's love, wouldn't it just compel him to do this miracle that the questioner considered uh, very rational and normal but this is what God says God says that he lighteth every man that cometh into the world he also says that those who hear to them shall more be given he makes promises like if you seek me you'll find me if you seek for me with all your heart if he made himself so obvious rather than everyone believing everyone would consider it just a, a fluke of nature. But if he puts himself out there and gives us revelation, but makes us seek for it, he gives us a, a carrot, if you will, or a kernel of truth and says, now those that look for truth, those that take and receive the light that I've given them and look for more, I promise to give them more. And if they seek me, they'll find me. Then God fulfills his duty and responsibility to show his love to the world, to those who would be saved if the message came to them without sacrificing that concept of miracles by definition, having to remain exceptional or people unfortunately dismiss them. I hope that helps answer the question and uh, there might be even follow-ups to the follow-up, but, um, but I've, I've studied that a great deal in my life and I've noticed uh, that so often people will take what's clearly miraculous and just dismiss it because it happens regularly. And so God had to keep a few things to be exceptional so that God, the God who made the laws of physics, for example, could occasionally suspend them so that everybody would be shocked and say there must be a God. But if he did that same thing regularly instead of occasionally, we would just add another law of thermodynamics to science and write it off as nature. God bless you. You have a good week. Hope to see you again next time. Thanks so much for listening. If you have a question you'd like to have answered, mention it in the comments field below or visit us at www.answersfromscripture.online. Thank you.